So in this short presentation I want to talk to you about forest pests, in specific gypsy moth and how we want to control it with a virus-based biological product. So why do we need to control the gypsy moth? First of all, it's a key pest in the forest and there are several reasons. Uh, gypsy moth feeds on over 500 shrubs and tree species. So it's not a really specific to one tree species and it can defoliate whole forests. Second of all, it occurs in massive outbreaks where you have thousands of insects in the trees and they will defoliate widespread forest parts or all of the forest. So it has a huge ecological impact, especially if you look at secondary infections. When larvae is feeding on the leaves, you can have viruses or bacteria entering there into the tree and also killing the tree. Furthermore, if you look at the picture, you see the larvae is really hairy. If you touch or come in contact with this hair, you can have rash and some humans are also building up uh, allergic reactions to the gypsy moth. The aims of this project was to find a biological solution to control the gypsy moth. And we want to have a really specific biological solution so when you spray the forest to control the gypsy moth, we don't harm any other species in the forest. Furthermore, we want to have a product price that is around the already existing products, which are non-selective or chemical products. Another point is the product has to be safe for humans, so you can spray it in public places as well. All these points led us to the conclusion that we should use a virus, because a virus fulfills exactly the points I mentioned right now. A virus is really specific to the target, and it does not affect other species, not other insects, and especially not humans. So within the project, we gathered 12 isolates from all over the world. Then we compared them in bioassays. So we looked at how efficient they're against gypsy moth. The two most effective strains we took and propagated them. That means we made more isolate and then tested them in greenhouse trials, semi-field trials, and field trials. So we had a look how they perform outdoor in real conditions. And we have seen they did perform really well, even in the level of other pesticides already on the market. While we were doing this, we built up a large-scale production with high automatization grade, so we have a low price for the end product. In the end, we developed a liquid product which is really easy for the end user to use. So at the moment we have this potential product at hand and we're looking at the registration process. If we start the registration process right now, we would have four to five years till we have the product on the market. But before we go into this process, our marketing is analyzing the market at the moment and is re-evaluating how it is economically feasible to do this at this point. If we have the green light from the marketing, we can go on and register the product. If they say it's not the right time point, we have to wait, but we still have the product at hand and we'll bring it into the market whenever the conditions are right and the market needs the product. Another step we are always doing and is never finished is the improvement of production because you always can improve points and get a better product and a product at a lower cost. The impact Biocoms had was that we found this potential product which is really specific. So if we spray it, we don't harm other species and we give the options to the user to choose an environmental friendly control of gypsy moth. Furthermore, with this new product, we will be able to spray in public places when a problem occurs with gypsy moth and also in ecologically sensitive areas.